What's going on YouTube? Got some green light wagons to look at. And I got a postal service mail delivery truck too as an added bonus. Let's let's take a look. I bought the whole set, it was cheaper, and um seems like these green light wagons they come out a lot faster online. Sometimes months ahead of where you'll get them on retail. So sometimes I'll get them early, save a little slight bit per cost per unit when I get the set of six. And then if I want to add a couple of duplicates, I'll probably try to get them at retail. This is actually an interesting set. It's kind of like last time when I got the set with the first line of old Vista Cruisers. They had two. Uh, debut and so this one has an old Vista Cruiser, but it also has variations of our um, Le Mans Safari cars. So we got a 77 and now uh, a new front end. We have a 76 car, so it's got a different grill on it. So we'll take a look at those in a minute. Let's get to the set first. We'll do something that um, is going to make my la uh, black one. This is a 55 Chevrolet 210 Townsman. And we looked at this last time in black on the other series, a previous video. So let's take a look at this one. That's got a really great color, so I didn't mind picking this one up, even though I don't really go after the Chevy wagons. Although, you know, usually when you see 55s, they're always the Nomad, so it's kind of nice to have a post car, four door car like this one. So let's take a look at it um, real quick. And the estate wagons, just as a reminder, they're all the same on the outside. Um, but you can see the vehicles that are included there if you need a screenshot. And there's your barcode. All right. Let's take a look at this one. This is going to be an interesting vehicle. Back this up a little bit. All right. There it is. It's done in that very pale turquoise. And um, you have your tampo for your um, body spear right there. This would have been probably one of the most common body styles of wagon back in 55 because it was uh, much more practical. The Nomad cost uh, more than a Corvette. The 55 was the first year for the Nomad. So. Uh, it was kind of interesting. This would probably be a lot less, and this would have been more realistic of what people were using back then. This does have, I think, yeah. So Greenlight does include, and I don't know if I showed this last time, they have an opening um, window, basically like that, that they don't have the tailgate operational, but they do have the little window there, so that's kind of cool. And they match the steel rims with the same paint and did dog dish hubcaps. Relatively low production cereal. That's pretty cool. It's the first time I've taken it out of the package. But um, I'm still a fan of this casting. Um, their tires on the sidewall look pretty good. I mean, they're not as thin as a 55 tire. So you, this almost could be like a resto mod type car where they... They put the uh, larger steel wheels, and then they can put a modern rubber underneath. But uh, other than that, the car's great. It's very stock looking. No roof rack or any of that stuff. And it's got the 55 front end, which I like the, a lot. I, I think I prefer this almost to the other two years, just because it's a very clean design car. So, very excited to have it. Um, we'll take a little bit of zoom just to take out the tampo work. It is worth noting that again Greenlight does a great job you can see the big Chevrolet emblem on the back you have your um, detail under the tail lights too that trim piece was there on these cars steel wheel and then there's your front end so a little black wash on the grill probably will liven that up a little bit make it look a little bit less toy like and I might do that at a different time. No opening hood on this casting. Interior is painted to match. It's got your quarter vent windows there too with their appropriate um, trim. So it's a great casting. Um, I actually like these cars more and more as I get them. I try to get them in the stock colors 
So there is our 55 Chevrolet 210. All right, what's up on the list next? Well, this will be new to the collection, this casting. Now this is something that's been out for a little bit, but I've never gotten one. And I'm actually glad I waited. So this is a 1969 Type 3 square back car. So these are really interesting part of Volkswagen history. Late 60s on these cars, they were doing a lot of different things. I think, and towards the late 60s, early 70s, there was, I think, a fuel injection option that wasn't so popular but uh, or reliable, I guess. But um, it was a, a thing on those air-cooled four-cylinder cars. This may or may not have been something like that. I can probably research that or leave comments below for you VW guys and gals that know a little bit more about these cars. I did know that they were starting to do that pretty early compared to other makes and models of vehicles during the time period. So kind of neat. This is an evolution, of course, of what VW was doing all along through the 60s. And uh, this is a pretty great design car basically expanded the usefulness of the idea of the rear engine air-cooled like the Beetle and made it on a, a larger platform. This is still a two-door car, but it's you know long wheelbase. It's got a little bit more usable space in the front hood here for storage as well. This does have, it looks like an operational tailgate, so let me take that open real quick. The good thing about it is it is metal so it's a cast piece that tailgate is not plastic let's see the interior is done in black roof rack is done very nicely too and it's got the vw wheels um, on there which a little large it looks like but they almost look like porsche wheels too like the like the wheels that they offered back then so it's kind of a cool look to this car i kind of really like that so and of course it's green <laughs> so that's another thing for me that I like about this. Um, unusual for green light too. So I'm looking real quick. Individual headlight lenses. They don't always do that so much anymore. But on this casting you have that. There's another added bonus. The VW is centered uh, nicely and it also is done without any smudges. So that clean execution there of that I think is very nice metal base of course there's a better view of the wheel they stick out slightly the post you can see is quite large on the axle so these probably I'm gonna get these off and probably shave some of that material away and then these wheels will probably sit a little bit better in the body as you can see just a little proud now that wouldn't be bad if the tire was wide like aftermarket but this seems to be more of a gauge tire like a stock size so probably look more appropriate if I got that tucked under a little bit and this would have been a storage area under here and some things for the motor but back here would have been the engine underneath the floor it's really a neat setup can see Volkswagen is pamphleted there if you look at these cars in real life I think memory serves me it was kind of on an angle when they would apply that because of the space they had they kind of angled their emblems down so that was kind of cool let's see let's open up the, let's open up the uh, bonnet real quick while it's So you can see underneath, you see how they apply the window. So it's it's just a lot of good detail on this car. Floor pan in there. There's your vents. It's kind of covered up by the thick paint, but you'd have vents there to draw air in. And then the roof rack is done very nicely. The flat slats of the, the bottom of the rack. And then you got them tubes. So cool car. 69 Type 3 fastback. Really neat car. It's got the hitch on it. Although I don't <laughs> you're not gonna want to tow a lot with this car. 
but you can do it. It's pretty stiff. You can see the the block hangs off the the back transaxle. So you'd have your transmission transaxle and then the engine would hang off of that. Really cool. Alright. V dub. Cool stuff. First one in the collection. Back this up a little bit. So happy to see that car. You know, of course, we added it to the collection in green, so that was a positive. So we're gonna look at some castings um, coming up. Let's look at the full size stuff. My favorite era of car probably is the 60s, 70s, 80s. So we're gonna look at some beauties. Now we have 71 old Vista Cruiser in the collection, but this is the first time it's been done by itself. It's close to this when we got that in the um, car and trailer set, the hitch and tow, which I have as well. But it's done in this um, lime green. So really sweet car. Let's take it out. It's got the sombrero type Olds hubcaps on it, which I like on the, this car. I think it looks the best. All right, so let me put this back. Gotta find some space over here before it goes to storage. All right. We've been over this car many times in past videos, but let's see if they made any changes to it or if anything has gotten better or worse in quality. I, I doubt it. This car seems to be pretty standard. It's got those um, tires that have been debuted for the past year or two. The grill on the 71 is very pretty. Of course, the separate chrome bumpers, separate roof rack, the Vista top, it's all there. Seems like the execution of the silver done on the windows is a little bit crisper on this one, which I like. And the wood grain detail is done, again, just very nicely. Let me go up here and make sure this stays up. All right. Vista Cruiser on the tailgate, the Oldsmobile insignia under the lock cylinder. One of the nicest tailgates operations yet in 164 scale. You can see though they match the interior. Really like that. It's nice that Greenlight takes the extra time to paint these interiors when they're not using the bare plastic color like black. They'll actually give it a shade of color. They kept the black, uh, the dash black. Get non-opening hood. They kind of been doing what they do on their Silverado castings where. Um, or their uh, seat 10 square bodies where they can change the hood design without having to change the whole casting so they rivet that in there if you're a heavy duty customizer uh, you know it makes the hood you take the hood off uh, you'd be able to put an engine in there and everything like that so kind of cool that it's adaptable you can see the dual exhaust the fuel tank there's our serial number applied right out against the transmission very nicely done. It's a good placement for that sticker right in the center. So there it is, 71 Olds. Really, really cool car. Um, you know, you could get big block Oldsmobile power on this car and uh, made it quite the, quite the vehicle to drive around and very stylish. I think this was actually a little bit, it had an edge over, I think, the Buick of the year. Fords even the olds is quite the car. All right, let's look at something really interesting. The 1980 Grand Marquis Colony Park car. This is um, an interesting time for the Panther platform. So this is the second year in production. Basically, 1979 they got rid of those super big Fords and they downsized the car. Lost almost about a thousand pounds off the previous platform where it was a gigantic. Uh, 78 basically so they got the Grand Marquis Colony Park for 1980 in 81 um, Ford switched to fuel injection but this still had a carb on it but they got rid of the 400 motor and they only offered 302s and 351 uh, Ford engines in this and the Crown Vic uh, variant so 80 was still carved, I believe, from research. In 81, they switched to the, to the Lincoln stuff, um, which they did the fuel-injected 302s. Uh, 
and it was wasn't port injection yet. It still had a throttle body fuel injection on Ford. So they just had the three speed auto, and they went to the four speed also when they switched to the fuel injection. So this this being an eighty car probably still had the older setup on it. Um, this is cool too because the car is brown. So I kind of like that. It goes with the eighty theme very good the other thing they had to revise was the trim pattern slightly so we're going to see a different script on the side and back and also the grill is a lot different on these mercuries before they went to the the slimmer grill all the way to when they changed the car in 88 so they had a very open grill for mercury let's see here you can see that brown is, has some metallic in it as well black dash painted tan interior all the trim lines are good no smudge let's take a zoom here and so we can see those emblems of course it's got those mercury turbine uh, wheel uh, alloys the colony park script like that very nicely applied grammar key on the back and then the older style mercury script on the tailgate no uh, license plate on this vehicle grammar key ls very very cool car it's got the mercury here I don't know if they went to that emblem yet um, by 80 because this is supposed to be an 80 car so interesting maybe they just wanted to keep the one rim there's a better detail of that grill Let's do the split um, signals there clear in the front tan or uh, amber in the back the way they do these cars all the same they always replace this front part here as a piece of plastic that they mold and they can easily swap instead of changing castings so smart did it just like the real cars were back then how Ford and Mercury would change <laughs> tailgate goes down um, a little it's a little um, you know it's a little loose a lot of them are kind of like this you'll see them kind of crooked and stuff it's just they operate okay but sometimes you'll sometimes I have to go in the car like one of the cars I had to drill out and file down some uh, the metal flashing in there and then the tailgate was fine so but this one's okay this one does all right all right so 80 Merc very very cool and if you want to remember yourself the difference you can see we look at my, I believe this is my 85. Hip Colony Park, similar, very similar. Mercury is the same on the back. The front is different though. There's a big difference there. And of course, when you go over the 80, I think I got what is the 88 or 90. The white one I got, you'll see a big difference in the scripts. All right, so our brown Mercury, very nice looking car. All right, let's get to the cars I originally piqued my interest <laughs> on this set of the Pontiacs, and they're awesome. I really like them, even though they got aftermarket wheels that going on with them. They got some really cool um, emblems. This one's beautiful. It's a plain Jane car, uh, red over red, just very 70s. I love it. It's got the opened up grill that 76 uh, Le Mans had, that grill, and of course that beautiful tailgate. So let's take a look real quick. Get this to zoom a little bit better. So this car is awesome. Um, I love that there's no wood grain on it because they didn't always have wood grain, especially for the intermediate vehicles, even though it was an option. The red looks just really stunning. It's a deep, deep red, very 70s. Uh, it's got the Kragar torque thrust slash torque thrust wheels on it. Um, it, well, it looks great. I do like this wheel. I'm going to pull out my hitch and tow car. I mean, just because I mean, it looks a little bit more stock. So maybe I'll have to pick up a few more of these or the Bandit um, car to make some more stock looking ones. But uh, these wheels are cool on it. I'm not going to deny that. Really nice clean window inset into the body casting, not on the outside like this one. It would have been cool if they made this construction like this, just because 
flush mounting to his windows probably helped them construct the car in a certain way, but it would have been nice to see that cast and do that too. But they made these cars very, very well. The Pontiacs are just really good looking. Look how clean that grill is on Green Lake. It's just awesome. So on the 76 car here, the Pontiac is different. The emblem is a little bit different as you can see. It just says Pontiac. They moved it, kind of cleaned it up. But 76, they were more flowery with their font and everything like that. So I thought that was really cool. Grand Le Mans on there. Here's your grill with the Pontiac Spear. I mean, the grills are great. I mean, this car looks just, just like it's supposed to. And also on the quarter panel, you can see there where it says Grand Le Mans. Look at that. Let's see if we can get this to zoom a little bit better. So, and then of course they got the trim stripe for your door molding. Black steering wheel. They didn't paint it. Uh, red interior. Of course we got our tailgate here. You can see how nicely Pontiac is done there. You can see how they did a little bit different font when they moved the 77 car. <laughs> Open this up real quick. You can see that really pretty red interior that they did on this car. This is very, very 70s. I love it. Um, had that tailgate like that with the bumper. Here's your back when the bumpers got really big because of the crash standards changed around this time. So they were kind of scrambling. A lot of the cars, um, when they upgraded the bumpers, were designed prior to this. So that's why you see them kind of like when they're always looking like they're tacked on there. That's the reason. They did okay with what they work with, though. And this car in particular aged very well. And it's, to me, it's very desirable. I like the way it looks. And uh, definitely handles better than the full-size cars of 76 were. So it's much more adaptable vehicle to make a little bit more performance out of it, I'd say. All right, so this is the 76. Let's take a look at the 77. I'll just leave this over here for reference. This is a really great car. So again, blue is another favorite color of mine. And this has the two-tone with the with the wood grain. And I think it looks very nice. It's very good medium blue metallic car. It's a 77, so you can see the difference in the grill. You got the painted just blank license plate up front. Blue interior, black steering wheel. All the trim is done. It's a little yellow. So that the vision trim, uh, I believe it was like a just a lighter colored fake wood. They made it a little goldish yellow instead of it being more of a darker wood. So close. It's very close, but it's you know it's not perfect color. I don't think they. It's very close though. And they didn't put any green detail in there either. They did on the bottom wood. You can see Le Mans there. What a great car. Blue interior. Look at that. Awesome. Very flashy car. This will look good towing a boat or something. You can see Pontiac there. And the taillights and the hitch. They have this little wing back here. And they designed these type of wings to um, basically direct airflow over this tailgate. Because they would have severe problems with... Um, basically, if you're in the wintertime or dirty roads, it would kind of create a vacuum back here and when airflow would go over these station wagons it would immediately kick it back and slam it against the back window and they didn't really have rear wipers back then so that would get kind of covered pretty quickly so these these airfoils here are designed to kind of grab air and just kind of get that negative pressure off this back deck and to keep the rear window cleaner but I mean it worked pretty good and they in introduced this type of system you know a while ago but that's the reason for that. And this went up all the way to the boxy cars of uh, the early 90s, late 80s, before they discontinued full-size cars like this. And they started putting wipers on the back. But yeah, that was kind of a thing to kind of keep that back deck clear. And it's cool that Greenlight has given us that detail. Because they did do it on these cars. Um, and I'm looking at my 90 or my 88 when they 
change it. Um, they had it on on the Ford cars, but um, you know it's not really present on green lights detail work. So there we go. So a couple of Pontiacs. I love the way they look. <laughs> They're really cool, and uh, they go good with my gold one too. So that's kind of exciting to have those vehicles. All right, a real quick update. I, I got another mail delivery vehicle just because it was on the pegs, and um, I said, "What the heck?" So I saw it. And I do love how the packaging, even though it's on the HD Truck Series 17, they change the packaging and do full deco with the United States Postal Service. So it makes the packaging stand out. And it looks like it's from a separate series, even though it's part of the, the two other trucks. But they don't even put the back on, you know, the other rigs on here. They strictly just talk about the casting itself. So I thought that was kind of noteworthy, too, the packaging difference on it and they do that on most of their postal uh licensed vehicles they'll do that they really won't talk about the others even though if any of it's not a hobby exclusive so i thought that was kind of interesting i wonder if it was like a special agreement they made with the postal service i have yet to see these at the postal service you'd think if you go to the post office they might have a few of these i haven't seen any if any of you have seen that going to the post office where they're um, pegging these let me know, because I'll go down to my post office. Maybe it's a better price. So it's just an awesome truck. I love the black wheels. It's got great detail. It looks good with my LLD truck. I brought that down just to have them together for a minute. <laughs> um, and, again, the back goes up. And you can see it's the same interior, actually, as the... This is the white, plain white one that I got earlier. So, love it. Cool truck. And again, it has that great front end on it. Just looks really cool. Very fun truck to have. So, there is my mail truck as a quick update. So, we got a lot of vehicles we looked at today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope everybody's holiday is going wonderful. Gotta love the Pontiac cars. Um, they're awesome. Highly recommend those. And, uh, yeah, so excellent little wagons series this time. We got more down the pike. Thank you for subscribing and watching. Till next time.